Hello, we are the Wisest Wizards. I'm Coffee Doug. Ryan Pancake Hat. We are here for Rough Cuts uh, on Saturday for our DVD review, which is... The Wall. Pink Floyd. Absolutely nice t-shirt, buddy. It's good to see you, hey. as always. Yeah. Um, I've got the DVD copy here. Uh, that was released, I want to say, around 2001 or so. Uh, the movie came out in 1982. Uh, here's the VHS copy that I've owned since high school, which was about a billion years ago. Um, the CD, um, dual disc, both sides. And here is the album, uh, which was released in 1979. This is what the album looks like, the 12-inch uh, vinyl. I'm very proud of. Um, these are kind of a little harder to find in good condition, and this one's in pretty decent condition. Um, <clears throat> I bring up the album and... The movie, because they are, they go together. They complement each other completely. Um, it is not a soundtrack to the movie. There has never been an official soundtrack to Pink Floyd, The Wall, the movie. No. Um, no. The, uh, you want to say some fun facts? You want to give a few fun facts? I don't have any fun facts. <laughs> okay, it's, <laughs> it is directed by Alan Parker. <clears throat> Most recently he did uh, The Secret Life of David Gale, or no, The Life of David Gale, not The Secret Life. Um, it stars Bob Goldoff. He was a uh, punk rock singer in... He, um, he sounds like a wizard from uh, Lord of the Rings movie. Bob and, uh, off the gray Boom, Boomtown Rats, that's the name of the punk band. Um, most significantly about this movie, uh, Pink Floyd the Wall, it is written by Roger Waters. He was the lead singer of the band and the bass player for quite some time. Mm -hmm. He was originally set to star in the movie. Uh, he didn't do a good screen test, so they yeah. decided to go with somebody else, and they found that Bob Goldoff. And I know I'm saying his name wrong, I apologize. It's god awful how you're doing It's god awful how I'm doing it. Um, that's horrible. Talk a little bit about the uh, the synopsis of the movie, how you take the movie. Well, I take Can't it as a, a a boy growing up. Actually, let me let me let me get more in depth than that. It's a it's an adult man, not unlike myself, <laughs> and uh, he kind of flashes back to uh, other parts of his life. I imagine, like when he's younger, uh, and. Uh, it know. is ba it, Roger Waters. I uh, fucking know. He based a little bit of it on himself. It um, it, his dad died when he was a kid in World War II, and then you oh. see that in the film. But the first thing you need to know about this film is a lot of people think it's a fucking stoner film, or you have to be high when you watch. Oh, it. I'm gonna tell you, I've never seen it straight up. Straight up. <laughs> I've never seen it without. Something. You do but not I'm have to be stoned or high. I it might add to the experience, but. I love the... F Why the, can't you be drinking? You can be. At oh, that's that's what I'm talking about. Um, the film itself has hardly any lines in it whatsoever as far as dialogue. It's okay. very little dialogue. Actually, the, there's a fun fact. The uh, main guy, he only has like one line, one, one continuous line. He says a word someplace, but then he says... Uh, you're, you're next, fuckers, or something like that. That's his only line oh, yeah. in the movie anything, after he destroys his room. Yeah, anything else he says is uh, Pink Floyd written. Yes. So, the, uh, basically, it's Music. the movie. You see it, You see the story of a boy growing up after it, you know his dad dies. He builds a wall around himself mm -hmm. to isolate himself from society. Not a real wall, but just in general. Everything he does in his life is pushing people away. What about the girl? Yeah, he's yeah he gets the girl, but he's always pushing people away, and he's always fucking things up for himself because he's so bitter towards you know life itself. And then the whole time the album is playing, you're getting the music of Pink Floyd. But um, you said but, it's not a soundtrack, so how does that? How does that uh, <laughs> Coffee Doug? do anything for because him. the uh, album when it was made in 1979 it was originally intended to be an album and then they were going to make a movie with more like concert footage starring Roger Waters well once he didn't star in it they decided to scrap the concert footage and made an actual movie with like a plot only no dialogue just music it, um, and a lot of the songs tell your fun facts they interchange there there are a lot there are a few songs on the album that are not in the movie and a few songs in the movie that are not on the album. I didn't write that down. Okay, well that's due to um, the movie. It, a movie flows differently than an album. You can't have the same song and the same music all the time. Like the reason that 
It's a story. You're right. Me. I bought I bought the Top Gun soundtrack because I thought it was going to be completely different than what was in the movie. Because uh, based on your logic, <laughs> right there. Yeah, a lot of it is different. Saying. I'm just saying that if you sit down and watch the movie and really like let it soak in, it's an experience. You've got you try not to have any interruptions as usual, but try to have your phone off. Like sit down, watch it. Like really engulf yourself in it. The album. <laughs> I've done numerous times. You've done the same thing. You don't listen to just one song off this album. You listen I, to the no, whole I thought fucking album. I thought you were talking about the movie and how no interruptions. I think that was a personal slam towards me. No, it wasn't a personal slam towards you. This asshole will talk his way through every movie you could ever imagine. We don't watch movies together. We watch them separate and then get together. That's because most of the time I'm like, Doug, you're going to love this joke. <laughs> and then I realize you're like a town over. Tell your fun facts. Uh, okay, there is animation in this movie, which uh, I think if you were high or drunk, it would be amazing to watch, uh, which uh, it is. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Uh, and there's... It blends in well with the movie, very yes, much so, there is like a, the way they cut it in. There's 20 minutes of animation, and uh, it took 50 artists and three years to complete. So wow, I find that to be uh, quite phenomenal. I mean, why so many artists? I mean, how many work in the Disney stuff, you think? That's mm -hmm. not important. Back to the wall. Um, tell your t-shirt story. Where did you get that shirt? This t-shirt I never actually bought. Uh, it was the middle of the summer, and it was probably like 110 degrees outside. And I see this guy, possibly a stoner, but he's wearing like a, uh, a, uh, like a cotton zip zip up like hoodie type deal and I mean I'm sweating balls I'm just wearing a t-shirt and shorts and he's like in jeans and this thing and he's just chilling and walking and I go uh, uh no no he comes up to me and he goes I really like your shirt and I was wearing a Playboy Bunny shirt at the time because you know I was young and I thought Playboy mm -hmm. Bunny was fun okay. so so he goes uh oh I really like your shirt and I go do you want it and he goes, really? He's like, that's the best answer anybody could have given me. So I'm like, here you go. And I totally took off my shirt and handed it to him. So there I am standing in the parking lot with no shirt on in the middle of summer. And he goes, well, I got to give you something. So he takes off this thing, dripping with fucking sweat <laughs> and nasty. It smelled like B.O. It was the worst thing that could have ever happened. I should have just been like, no, that's all right. Keep it. But I took it and I threw it in the back of my truck. And I threw it in the washing machine when I got back home. And I kid you not, I wear it all the time. So you traded Playboy for Pink Floyd. But totally worth it, Excellent. though. It's a great story, I thought. Because, you know, who the fuck does that? Yeah. You know? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Good story. Definitely check out Pink Floyd The Wall. It's rated R. It's uh, like an hour and a half long. Why is um, it rated R? Do, because it's got nudity, it's got sex, It's it's got a lot of stuff in it. It's got blood. There, <laughs> it really does. Um, I recommend watching the movie and then doing research on it. There's so much information on this movie and how it came to be. The creators were not happy with it in the end. They say that the beginning of the, this movie, Roger Waters writing this, was the beginning of the end for Pink Floyd. People have, you know, said that. I don't know what people, but they've said that. Members of the band. And uh, they also say the longest line ever in any song is in a Pink Floyd song from this movie, Goodbye Blue Sky. Ah, that's a good one. I don't know if it's true, but the line <laughs> is, <laughs> Did you ever wonder why we had to run for shelter when the promise of a brave new world unfell beneath the clear blue sky? <laughs> I don't know if that's a true fact. I looked it up, I couldn't find it, but I've been told that that's the longest line ever. In a, Did in you a know in, this, in this movie, when the teacher finds his poetry, that's actually from Pink Floyd Money. Oh. The, the poetry lines are uh, from another song from a different album, Dark Side of the Moon. Cool. So there's lots of things if you like Pink Floyd. Uh, like lots of little hidden Easter eggs. Well, yeah, it is, pretty much. All right, we recommend it. It's, uh, it's a very meaningful movie. Everybody will get something different out of it, out of the plot, the story, everything. So everything. Check out Pink Floyd, The Wall, and then absolutely listen to the album. Uh, thank you, uh, Rough Guts. I'm Coffee Doug. I'm Ryan Pancake Cat. Word of warning, don't have a loaded gun uh, next to you when you watch this movie. Have a wonderful Saturday. We'll see you next week. All right.